Welcome back live. We continue right here with the sports call. Bob Pompiani and Gene Collier with you. We have some Twitter action in. Kevin Davis on Twitter says, ready for pirate predictions, 67 and 94, one rain out. I don't have the heart to say they'll lose 95 <laughs> games. So that's what Kevin says. And we have this from Will, Will Knight on Twitter, at KD Pomp, at Gene Collier. He says, what are your guys' thoughts about Hurdle claiming they will be the laughing last after they win a championship with this group of players? I think, Gene, you said he used the word explosion. I'm a little surprised by all of this, but then again, maybe not. What's your thing? I didn't see the whole context, but the quote was, uh, the town will explode when we win it all. That's what it was. Um, so, again, I didn't see the context, but by itself, that's a statement you can make about any city at any time. Yeah, especially in February. <laughs> Jay in the north side. What's up, Jay? How you doing? Okay, Jay, thanks for taking the call. Uh -huh. Basically, I'm not thinking about it in consultants. He came into a very bad situation in mm -hmm. the beginning. He's going to leave in a bad situation at the end. But at the end of the day, I kind of disagree with Gene saying that, that you know, you're not going to get anybody else to come in up stature that's going to make it. we got to look at who they have. They have, the, um, they have all freshmen. They have so-and-so. They have graduated a little bit. If they gave Sullins another year, two years to see whether he materialized, it would be a totally different scenario. But any person, any call, any coach that comes in, you're still going to have that same grain of, of, of personnel for yeah. the next two years. You're right. Your and I don't think there's any way to suggest that they're going to be good next year. They're not going to be good, regardless who's here. So, Gene, I want to ask you this. The one thing that I've been very disappointed is the way they are losing. It's, it's fundamentally flawed. It's, it's one thing to lose, but if you can see tangible progress, that is, freshman guys are playing the right way, they're getting close, they could have won. And we saw that with Syracuse, there was a close game there. NC State, maybe they could have won, but there have been more lopsided 30-point losses than there should be. Yeah, I mean, Pitt does not play, uh, from, what I've, from the little I've seen on them, with a lot of passion. There's a great stat today in the Post-Gazette, and I don't know if you're aware of this, Bob, but uh, Ryan Luther, who's missed almost all of the season with mm -hmm. an injury, he still leads Pitt in, I think, offensive rebounds with 36. Oh. He hasn't played since December <laughs> 9th. Uh, so that's the way Pitt's playing. And, um, you know, at some level, the coach is responsible for that. Now, as far as, you know, who they're going to get to come in here, I don't think it was me that said uh, nobody would want to take this job. I think that was a caller. Um, but, uh, you know, Pitt has to decide whether they can tolerate this, this kind of team for another full season. That's really what it comes down to. Let's go to Lake Trail, Pennsylvania. Jeff. Hey, Jeff, what's up? Hey, Bob. Hey, first off, I, I just want to say with the red tie and the shirt and the pinstripes, you kind of make me uh, remind me of the uh, St. Valentine's Day massacre in South uh, Chicago there during Prohibition. Okay, thank um, you. What's your call? <laughs> but uh, yeah, the point is, uh, with Pitt basketball, why is it that the team is so top heavy with freshmen and sophomores? Where I mean, during the Dixon years, uh, it, it was junior and senior level. You know, you know, with the leadership and the experience. Uh, and the experience. Right. You know, Pitt is not a destination like, uh, you know, Kentucky or North Carolina or Duke, where they're one and doneers. So where are the juniors and seniors? Most you know, of them transferred. Gene, your thoughts? Yeah, and most of the transfer when the coaching change was made. The coaching change. This all goes back to the coaching change. You had a very successful uh, head coach, and you forced him out. Uh, that's really the long and short of it. Right. Although the last couple of years of Jamie's uh, regime were not all that good, not by no, his standards. No, he's transitioning into right. the conference. Now, and so, and then we saw Artist, who was here, as well as uh, Michael Young, didn't like what they were seeing with Stallings and the way the approach was. So, sure. uh, you know, there yeah. were times they bailed on him. Uh, it was just an ugly situation. I don't know what the answer is right now. You know, I don't. I just know that it can't get any worse. At least you wouldn't think so. Joe in Manaka. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Bob and Gene, how's it going, gentlemen? How you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Uh, had a stellar question. It's good to see him freeing up some cap room. There's a few names that seem like they'd be a really good fit. Uh, Kenny Vaccaro to safety, Malcolm Butler, Navarro Bowman. Mm -hmm. Have you heard anything about any – Interest in, in those names, I think Vaccaro would be a pretty good upgrade for the Steelers. Uh, I haven't heard those guys specifically, Gene. How about you? Well, Bowman uh, came up as a topic in uh, Ray Fittipaldo's excellent post because that piece the other day. The problem with him is he's got some injury history and he's not, he's not young. 
Um, but they definitely need help, help at some inside, at inside linebacker, and it wouldn't surprise me if they took a look at him. I like Derek Johnson, a guy that uh, is, I think, it fit in nicely. But, I mean, at this point, it's all subject, subjective thoughts uh, on our view. We don't know really what they're going to do. We know that they have needs. A lot of them on defense. We'll see what they do. Uh, we're going to take a break. Come back with more right after this on Pittsburgh CW.